Hi, today's video is about a 40-foot uh, Class A motorhome that is based on a 1984 Neoplan Cityliner N1162 uh, chassis. Uh, I purchased this at an auction shortly before Christmas and flew out to California and I'm in the process of driving it back to Houston, Texas. I'm currently in Tucson, Arizona. Uh, I was waiting for the blizzard of West Texas and New Mexico to go away, make the roads a little bit safer to travel. So. Um, this is a very unique motorhome. There's only about a half dozen of these in the United States, and I really only know of a couple of them that were converted by Pegasus. Don't know much about Pegasus, but uh, this is essentially a high floor tour coach with a uh, low driver's area, and that gives you a lot of space up top. And um, when we go inside, you'll see there's some just some fantastic views. Um, so it does have an independent driver door, and this is very unique in, in coaches. You just don't see this. Um, there's, there are several uh, storage compartments, including this one here. And um, you've got three storage bays. The first one is storage. The second one contains a 20 horsepower Yanmar three-cylinder diesel generator that's good for about 10 or 12 kilowatts. And then the third one is the wet bay. The battery box is, uh, contains two 8D uh, batteries. These things are huge, but that's what it takes to start this engine. And then there's the radiator intake here. And um, this is a German-built bus, so it was originally not equipped with this engine, but uh, Neoplan USA retrofitted it with a Detroit diesel 8V92TA. This is a mechanical engine, so it does not have a DDEC control computer on it, and that makes it really easy to work on. Um, doesn't quite get the great fuel economy that a DDEC would deliver, but, you know, I'll, I'll take maintainability over fuel economy. So it's, a, it's got great accessibility to this side of the engine. Um, there is a fairly hefty Webasto heater here. Um, it's currently disconnected. I, I suspect it'll work once it's wired back. And, and then there is a lousy little 10 gallon electric water heater, power steering reservoir, and an air dryer. Um, all in all, lots of room back here. Uh, much better than uh, some buses I've seen. There are some little scratches here. Eh, it's not really that big of a deal. Um, looks like it just got too close to something. And then you can see the body's really straight. Coming back up this side, first bay is wet bay. Second bay, this side is storage. The other side is the generator. And then this, this whole bay is storage. And then there is the um, diesel uh, fuel tank here. One of the neat features about this bus is it's a pneumatically operated door. Um, air pressure is a little low right now, so it makes the door really slow. It's also part of the reason the bus is sitting down. So this uh, curbside entrance, you've got stairs that go up into the living area, and then you've also got access for the driver and the and, uh, passenger seat. Um, I'll show more of the driver's area here in a few minutes. and. Uh, Cosmetically, uh, the coach needs some work. Um, that's part of the reason it was at auction. And um, there is a modest electric kitchen, a dinette that seats uh, four to five people comfortably. One of the neat features in the dinette is that the table can be slid all the way out, um, creating more space. And this is just a nice feature. I've not seen this before in an RV. And if you notice here, there are windows they go all the way around. And if you had the blinds up, you get a panoramic view no matter where you're parked. And um, probably the premier feature for this coach is this little lounge area that would seat two to three people in captain's chairs um, and um, above what the driver's area is. So you get another, 
you know, five to seven feet of living space that you wouldn't ordinarily have in most coach designs. And um, the coach is, uh, you know, 13 and a half, uh, 14 feet tall. I don't know quite exactly what it weighs or what it, what the height is. Um, there's also space for a couple more chairs here. Um, somebody took the chairs out. It has a brushed aluminum uh, ceiling, and then there is an entertainment pod with a premium 12-inch TV. I'm gonna guess it's color. Uh, it's gonna go get recycled, um, and that whole pod's gonna go away and get replaced with something else. Um, it does currently have uh, a couch that uh, folds out into a twin or full-size bed, and it also has a um, a little game table built into it. It's a really nice couch. I've not, I mean, this is this is pretty high end. I've not seen these kind of features before. Um, it has a trash compactor, a little bit of space under the sink, a built-in ice box, a two burner electric um, stove, a little small bar sink, space for a very tiny microwave, a couple of modest cabinets with drawers, and it has a Norcold refrigerator with some more storage space above it. Um, it uh, has a nice half bath. Uh, the mirror is missing, but other than that, you, you see there's quite a bit of space here. And then uh, one of the highlights of the coach is this uh, enclosed shower that includes a skylight. Um, really nicely done. There's a little cracking in the, the corners of the grout lines, and I'll, I'll touch that up with some Sika Flex. And then there's a, a fan up here. And um, then you get into the uh, bedroom in the coach, and there are a couple of access hatches where the bed is supposed to be. And you have a little entertainment center and uh, closets. And um, it's a really, really nice coach layout. So one of the things that the coach is equipped with are three air conditioners. Um, this one and the one in the very front also have a low heat mode. Um, it has a almost comical um, electrical panel. Um, it makes reference to a jacuzzi water heater and um, a whole bunch of other things that I don't really think are here, um, like a liquor dispenser. Um, and floor lights, so I, I you know I don't know. I'll, I'll untangle some of that. Um, there is just a plain air conditioner here, and then um, this unit here uh, is air conditioning and heat. So uh, let's go down and take a look at the driver's area. Oh, I got to crawl through it and unlock it. So you can see here, there's a really big door for the driver to get in and out. And um, there is this really strange carpeted access way down in here. It goes back a good five or six feet. And then you have the uh, driver's area here. I've installed an iPad mount. There's a remote control for the generator, space for some radios, and a whole um, concoction of switches and indicators. Uh, this this coach has probably the strangest shifter I've ever seen on a vehicle. This is actually the shift control. It's up or down gear and then reverse neutral drive three, two, and one gear. It does have a heavy duty Allison transmission which offers a lockup mode in first, second, and third gears. Or I'm sorry, in second, third, and fourth gears. And there's space for stereo and CB up here. Um, and, uh, you know, it's got a couple of little drink holders here. You know, all in all, um, it's actually a pleasure to drive. And um, you have pretty darn good visibility out of this side. Um, that side's a crapshoot. Uh, the window has is double glazed and has condensation between the, the glazing and makes it very difficult to see the mirror sometimes under certain conditions. And there is a small cabinet here 
uh, I guess that one's a, f a false front. Um, and then there is a another cabinet here which uh, contains a, a relay box. So I've got a lot of work to do cosmetically, um, and uh, there's a little bit of functional work, but the coach only has, you know, 68. 68,840 miles on it, so it's a very low mileage coach. And um, with that, let's go ahead and fire up the engine. <clears throat> so right now the uh, engine is in rear control mode. I had a stop solenoid that failed on me Christmas Eve. But, uh, so it's got a really strange exhaust system. The muffler's up under there and then the actual outlets here. So I'm going to go ahead and if you've never seen one of these, this is a rear control box and it's on off, rear or front, start or front. So to run it from the front, you would do front, front, on, but we're actually going to run it from back here. So. smoky this morning. And um, that is a cold start with no ether, no glow plugs, good old Detroit diesel. So it does smoke a little bit when it first starts up but uh, I've been told this is one of the smoothest running engines that most people have seen. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and open the uh, compartment for the generator, but I'm not gonna actually start it. So I've got a little uh, Yanmar three-cylinder um, 3T90 LE engine. Um, the wiring's a cluster. 12-volt alternator connected to a 25-volt system. And then there's a little self-exciting 10 or 12 kW generator. I have no idea what it is. Uh, it's got a 100 amp breaker on it, which it probably shouldn't. Um, and it has air suspension, which unfortunately is not inflated right now. But other than that, this generator runs great. It's a really weird installation. There's a radiator there and an exhaust fan there that blows the exhaust underneath. And so I'll set that to cab, at which point this thing can be run from the cab uh, very easily. And um, it's got its own little fuel pump right there and a little fuel filter. And um, this is purely a bonus. Little Yanmar engines run really well. It smokes a little bit, but I'm hoping that's just because it hasn't been run in a while and that that'll stop after it's been exercised. So I'm gonna go ahead and shut this. Um, and the reason I have to set the camera down is that this latch is uh, very, it's broken, so it's very difficult to operate by hand. This is my 40-foot Pegasus Class A motor coach. Uh, I bought this at an auction.